I'm Dr. Holly Anderson. I am a attending cardiologist at the New York Presbyterian Hospital. I'm also the Director of Education and Outreach for the Ronald O. Perlman Heart Institute and the Scientific Advisor to the Women's Heart Alliance. It's a long title. Heart disease is the number one cause of death for women in this country and now worldwide. It kills more women every year than all cancers combined. And it's not just older women. Uh, younger women are more likely to die from heart disease than breast cancer at every age. Not enough women know this. Still today, 45% of women in this country don't know that heart disease is the number one cause of death. And awareness is even less in women of color, women of so lower socioeconomic status, and younger women. In fact, it's not even on the radar screen of younger women. And that's unfortunate because this disease is largely preventable. And death rates due to heart disease has been increasing in young women since the year 2000. Only 27% of women in this country can name another woman who has heart disease, and only 11% can name a woman who has died from heart disease. Now, how is this possible if heart disease is the number one cause of death for women? I'll tell you how it's possible. That's because heart disease just kills women, and oftentimes the community attributes it to something else. And also, heart, uh, women don't talk about their heart disease, much in the same way as they didn't talk about breast cancer back in the 1970s and 1980s. And the reason why they don't talk about it is they feel that they might be judged, that they're stigmatized by it. And this is unfortunate because a woman who does know another woman with heart disease is much more likely to consider her own risk and to talk to their doctor about it. Um, most of what we know about heart disease has come from research done on men, designed by men, and this has greatly benefited men, but women have not fared as well. And while death rates due to heart disease have been declining in this country for decades for men, um, the death rates due to heart disease has only started declining for women more recently. But again, death rates due to heart disease is increasing in our youngest adults and more so in women. And actually this past year, there were more deaths due to heart disease and stroke for the first time in decades. And again, I'm most concerned about our youngest population where that increase is, go is the fastest. Once a woman gets diagnosed with heart disease, she will do worse and be more likely to die from it. A woman having a heart attack in this country today will wait, wait longer before presenting to the emergency room. She'll be less likely to have the classic symptom of chest pain. She'll be less likely to have a diagnostic electrocardiogram and a, a diagnostic blood test. And not surprisingly, she'll be less likely to be diagnosed correctly. But even if she is diagnosed correctly, she'll be less likely to receive all the life-saving therapies we have to treat heart attacks. And even if, if the decision is made to give her these therapies, they will be given on a 13 minute time delay compared to a man. And we have a, we have a say, saying that time is muscle. But even if you control for all of these variables, a woman is still more likely to die from a heart attack than a man. And it's the youngest women who have the greatest death discrepancy rates, and we don't know why. So we have to do more research on women. Women's hearts are different, and women's disease of their heart is different. And only about a third of the participants in cardiovascular research trials today are women, and women have more heart disease than men. And only a third of them report the data by gender. So we have to invest more in women's uh, heart disease research. I love talking about heart disease because every time we do, and reach somebody, we always hear feedback and stories of, I wouldn't have acted. I wouldn't have gotten myself checked out if I hadn't heard, heard you talking about it or heard somebody telling about their disease. So young women have to know that it's their, their greatest chance of dying is from heart disease. And how they, how they live their life now dramatically um, makes a difference for their future. And know your risk factors. Do you have a family history? a mother or father who died of heart disease early. Get your blood pressure checked out. Get your sugar checked out. Um, stop smoking. The biggest population in our country that smokes is young women. Um, and, and you know, by the way, anything that you do that's good for your heart is good for the rest of you, okay? Physical activity is the fountain of youth. Anything you do that gets your heart rate up will reduce your risk of dying prematurely from heart disease. And by the way, 
everything, when you get your heart rate up, it's the single most important thing you can do for your sleep. And sleep is undervalued, under-researched, under-appreciated, and very crucial to our health. Um, you are what you eat. Trying to eat a diet with good fruits and vegetables and you know foods that look like the same when you pluck them from the ground, not processed foods that, especially in this country, are filled with salt, sugar, and fat. And um, remember, social isolation is detrimental to your health. Spend time with close friends. Women who spend time with their close friends live longer with less disease. But remember, not all relationships are good. Um, limit your time with people who pressure you to conform, who make you feel bad. You know who these people are and spend less time with them. And start doing it now. I think women often, they delay, they delay their own health and put everybody's health first. And I think especially young women, you know, we say that pregnancy is almost a stress test or a window into the heart. So if you're pregnant and you experience uh, high sugars or diabetes during pregnancy or your blood pressure increases during pregnancy or you have something called preeclampsia, you're at a significant increased risk of having a heart disease or stroke later in life. So think about that. Women who have autoimmune diseases, rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, which are much higher women, are at higher risk of heart disease. And women who have migraine headaches with aura are at increased risk. So think about, consider your own risk. And all of us should be working on risk reduction, right? We're all trying to get a better night's sleep and eat right and work out and laugh and spend time with our friends. It matters. And again, everything that you do that's good for your heart will help you reduce your risk of having cancer and having dementia later in life. And it's important to educate a woman because when you educate a woman, you educate a family. And when you educate a woman, you educate a community. So thank you for doing this.